Hey guys, glad you stopped by. Uh, tonight, we're gonna do some dinner and uh, have some conversation. Hopefully you'll be able to stay and eat with us. Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, so tonight, for dinner, I, we're gonna do a sheet pan meal. Something quick, something easy. And uh, I found this on, I don't remember, simply something. Um, online, it's, it's one of the 8,000 websites I use. Um, I browse through every week trying to find recipes for us to try and uh, I'll leave it right here as always. Um, that way you know if you want to browse at their site um, and get some ideas you know that you can share with us on Facebook or you know leave down in the comments, uh, send me a picture, things like that. Um, but tonight it's a, it's like I said, it's a sheet pan meal. Uh, it goes in the oven all at once, but it's mini meatloaf and uh, yellow uh, yellow mustard potatoes, which it's got a mustard glaze on them and uh, some roasted broccoli. I think it's gonna be phenomenal. And all on one sheet and all in about 35 minutes. That in and of itself is a game changer, um, right? We love quick meals. So, uh, that being said, if you're new to my channel, this is your first video, um, thanks for stopping by. I hope you get something out of this video. Check out some of my other videos. If you're returning or one of our new subscribers, welcome back and thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, um, would be more than happy to um, let you have you join our neighborhood here. And uh, don't, so that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, comments, always welcome. I answer about 99.5% of them. Even when it gets crazy and we have a lot of comments, I still try to respond to all of them. Um, that's all part of being a good neighbor, right? Um, and I feel communication is important in any way, shape, or form, right? If you took the time to comment, I should take the time to comment back. The only thing I ask is um, you be civil. It's okay to disagree, as always, you know, with me or anybody in the comments for that matter. Just be respectful. Think before you type. That's all I ask. All right, so that being said, now that we got the hootenanny out of the way, um, why don't we head on down here to the counter and we'll get started on this uh, wonderful little dinner. All right, hold on for me one second. All right, we are down here at the counter. So the first things we need to do, go ahead and start preheating our oven. We're gonna preheat it at 400 degrees and make sure you don't have anything in it. And we should probably take the hamburger out of the way of the uh, uh, vent there so that way it doesn't get hot on us. But, and you will need one sheet pan. I have a full size sheet pan. I, this is what I use. I have like a bazillion of them. I have other sizes too, but this is the one I prefer. And you're going to get a piece of parchment paper on there. Now this recipe makes four miniature meatloafs, um, about a quarter pound each. Um, they'll be a little heavier because we're adding stuff to this. But then it also comes with a pound of uh, cut up potatoes, cubed potatoes, and then uh, three-ish on the heavy side cups of broccoli florets that we're gonna roast up. But right now we're gonna focus on this meatloaf. So in here I have one uh, pound of hamburger and to this we are going to add uh, some spices, which I get the lid off. In here I have uh, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. I have one teaspoon of garlic powder, I have a half a teaspoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and I have a teaspoon of salt. So I am going to grab a fork real quick. A fork, not a spoon. And we'll just give this a quick mix, like such. And then we are gonna go ahead and sprinkle this over our one pound of hamburger. Then we are going to add two tablespoons of dried minced onions. You know, they're just dehydrated onion chips. Um, that way we don't have to fuss with dicing up an onion, you know, really small, getting it in there. This adds flavor. We're trying to add flavor to this without having to throw in a bunch of vegetables because they're miniature meatloafs. So we're gonna go ahead and get those two tablespoons worth of the dried minced onion in there. And then we are gonna follow that up with a quarter cup of uh, breadcrumbs, your favorite breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs of your choice. I'm using panko. Um, and if you have plain breadcrumbs, that's great. I didn't, I have uh, what looks like they have Italian seasoning in them. So we're gonna go ahead and get that quarter cup in there. And then we are going to follow that up with uh, one 
Yeah. <laughs> One tablespoon of tomato paste. And we'll go ahead and get that in there and get it nice and uh, kind of broken up a little bit. And then we've got one egg that right here, and it's a large egg. And we're gonna go ahead and get that in there. And then I have got one tablespoon of uh, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, which is easier to pronounce than spell. I <laughs> All this time I still can't pronounce Worcestershire sauce. And now there's a couple ways you can mix this up. You can use a spoon and fold this all together. And I, I don't recommend this, um, even though I've done it. You can use your stand mixer, um, for that matter. Just turn it on stir and let it go real slow. What you don't want to do is overwork your meat. If you over mix it, you know, you, you work it to death, you'll end up with a really like too firm a meatloaf. So I'm just going to use my hand and we're just going to get in here and we're going to mix this all together and make sure it's in dispersed evenly. Okay, we got her mixed up good. So the next thing we're going to do, you can see in there, is since I'm going to make four of these, and I'm using 80-20 hamburger, by the way. Again, I, it, if I don't ever mention it, it I guarantee it's going to be 80-20. But I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to, I'm going to just score it in half, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to score it in half this way, too. That way, I, I get four even uh, meatloafs. So then I'll just take one corner out, or one quarter of it out, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna form this into a meatloaf shape. All right, we got our meatloaf shape just like that. Now we'll take it over and put her on the piece of parchment paper. Now we're gonna do this, um, we'll put the meat here and then we'll put one thing here and then we'll put our third thing here. I think it's potatoes and then it's gonna be broccoli. All right, well, let me get these other three done real quick, and then we can move on to the potatoes. Okay, so we got our four meatloaves are done. Now, the last thing I have, I have a quarter cup of barbecue sauce. And you can make homemade barbecue sauce. You can use a barbecue sauce of your liking. I personally like uh, uh, Sweet Baby Ray's. Um, I, there's not a barbecue sauce out there pretty much I don't like. Um, I know there's some that are better than others, obviously, but... Uh, our preferred is Sweet Baby Ray's at any rate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush this onto our meatloaves like our glaze. Um, now, <laughs> if you want a really good glaze, you should check out my uh, my meatloaf video. Um, that That is a meatloaf that is to just die for. Um, it is one of several, not one of several, but I mean, there are some dishes that I've made over the years that the family truly loves and wants on a fairly regular basis, and that meatloaf is for sure one of them. I, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, it well balanced, you know. And if I could afford to buy, you know, eight billion pounds of hamburger, I would definitely make it all the time. But enough of that rant and rave. All right, so we got our barbecue sauce on there now. When it, the way we're going to cook all this, um, if we need to add more barbecue sauce down the road, we most certainly can. Um, so I'm gonna start out with just a light glaze on those. And now our, our meatloaf is done. So we can move on to our potatoes. So our potatoes are really pretty much straightforward. We're gonna use some olive oil here and we're gonna put in one tablespoon of olive oil, right? Little bit more there is that we are going to put in one tablespoon of whole grain mustard of your choice i'm using a dijon whole grain mustard which i need to shake a little bit I, does anybody else forget to shake their mustard and then you open it up and you get this giant glob of like liquid before you get the mustard um, happens to me all the time so we're doing one tablespoon of mustard one tablespoon of olive oil and then I am going, this one I'm gonna grab a glove on because I really don't wanna get my hands on oily and mustard, mustardery. We'll give this a quick little stir around there. And then I have got one pound of golden tomatoes, or tomatoes, golden yellow potatoes. Um, they're similar to the red potatoes, you know, um, but just yellow. 
uh, I, in a, they got a little different texture, but we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna get these all tossed in here. Hey, lady. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have got our potatoes coated, just like such. I mean, wasn't that easy? That was like super simple. Make sure I got all the ingredients. Oh, I did forget one. A pinch of salt. I am really good about forgetting at least one ingredient on a fairly regular basis. So we'll go ahead and get that salt in there. It's about the equivalent of a quarter teaspoon, but I had just written down a pinch of salt. So we're gonna get that in there real quick, just like that. And then we will go ahead and spread this onto the pan. And we're gonna spread these out kind of even. Um, well, kind of even, we're gonna spread them out even. And it looks like it's gonna take up a lot of this pan, but it's not, and I'll tell you why. Because what we're gonna do now is we are going to throw this our hamburger and our meatloaf and our uh, potatoes in the oven now and give them a head start because they're going to take a little longer to cook. Get those scooted over just a hair. So let me get this in the oven real quick and we'll talk about how long for. Okay, we got our meatloaf and potatoes in the oven. I set the timer for 10 minutes and we're going to let that cook for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, while those are cooking, um, get you back down here to the counter real quick. We can go ahead and get our um, broccoli together. Now, I went and got uh, a couple, two, three heads of fresh broccoli right here, and I just cut the stalks off of them. We just want the florets. So to this, we're gonna go ahead and add our uh, about a tablespoon or two of oil. Yeah, I mean the recipe called for one tablespoon, but I know that's more than three cups of oil or three cups of broccoli. So we'll go a little heavier on the oil. And then just some salt, right? Get some salt in there, good pinch. Give this a good, you know, quick mix. Make sure we get, you know, a little bit of the oil and salt onto every last piece. And then that way, all we have to do when that timer goes off is put the broccoli on and do a little more, uh, little more baking in the oven. Okay, our timer is going off, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna pull our pan out, just like such. Set that right there. Now, if you're worried about the grease in your meatloaf, um, touching your potatoes, so to speak. You can put a piece of foil right along there. I personally, it, that doesn't bother me none. So we're gonna go ahead and move our potatoes over. You know, get them kind of bunched up in there. And we're gonna move that meatloaf over just a hair. Just like that. Now, while I was sitting here waiting on this to cook, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna add a little more to my broccoli real quick. So I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of roasted garlic. It's this dry roasted garlic. And I'm gonna put in about an eighth to a quarter of uh, some crushed red pepper, some bird seed, some pepper flakes. Get that in there. And I wanna do it in the bowl instead of putting it on the pan so that way I get more on the broccoli than I do the pan. Because I've had that happen to me several times. Get that mixed in. And then we're just gonna simply take our oven glo or oven glove off Whoa. for a second. Grab our bowl here. We'll lay our broccoli out next to our potatoes. Just like such. Squeeze as much as we can onto the pan. There we go. Get that nice and layered out. Give the potatoes some space in between them so that way I know we cook. Then we'll Get our glove back on. Get these back in the oven. <clears throat> Just like such. And then we'll reset our timer. Now let's talk about how long to set that for. So 
and what we're looking for. I set mine, uh, the recipe called for 15 to 20 minutes. And that, I mean, that sounds about accurate at 15 to 20 minutes. But what we're looking for, we are looking for your uh, meatloaves to be, um, they'll be crisp on the top and you should be able to touch the top of them and the, they should bounce back if move at all, they should be firm. Um, or if you have a thermometer, at least 160 degrees, which I recommend. That's the way I'm gonna do it. Your potatoes should be crisp on the outside and then they should be tender on the inside, you know, fork tender. So that way we can eat them, right? You don't wanna eat a hard potato. I mean, you might wanna eat a hard potato. There are times I like mine a little crunchy, but all in all, crispy on the outside with the potatoes, uh, tender on the inside, meat should be 160 degrees. So I set my timer for 17 minutes. I'll check it at 15 and go to, you know, and go up to 20 if need be to uh, achieve that 160 degrees on the meatloaf. That's the most important part. So when I come back, we'll have these out of the oven, take a look, serve some up, and try some. Be right back. Okay, there we are. I went ahead and I got the mini meatloaves tempt and I checked the potatoes for fork tenderness and our broccoli is most certainly done and we are ready to go. So let me go ahead and get you backed up here a little bit. Oops, sorry, wrong direction. There we are. All right, so. Now what we gotta do, we've let it sit for a few. We should be golden. One thing you wanna always do, anytime you pull something out of the oven, you wanna let it rest for a few. If not, it's just gonna melt your face off and you're not gonna taste a thing, um, other than a whole lot of heat and a whole lot of, oh my God, that's burning my face. So we'll go ahead and get our, get us a mini meatloaf on there. Hopefully not lose our tongs. And like I said, I mean, you can see, I mean, the grease came down in. And like I said, if, you're, if you don't want the grease, you don't have to have it. You can just as easily put just a, a piece of aluminum foil across here. And you can hold it with the, like these two pieces of meatloaf here. You can hold it. And that way you can uh, keep the grease uh, over with the meatloaf and not with your potatoes. I personally, that doesn't bother me. So I had no qualms with it at all. I think if anything, it'll just add a little bit of flavor to those potatoes. But that being said, my friends, there is our dinner. And that took all of like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. The most work you're gonna have to do is cube up those potatoes, which if you buy the mini golden potatoes, just cut them into quarters. Uh, if you buy the bigger ones, cut them into about bite-sized chunks, about three-quarter to one-inch chunks, and you'll be in like Flynn. Yeah, not a problem at all. Let me get a fork worth having here. And the first thing I want to try is these potatoes because I love potatoes. Um, doesn't even matter what kind of potato it is. Mmm. That's really well balanced. I mean, it's just got a, just a hint of that mustard. Maybe just a little more mustard, but those potatoes are perfect. You can taste the oil, you can taste the salt. Like I said, you got that hint of the mustard and where that, the grease came off the hamburgers and went into the, the uh, potatoes, it has just that little bit of flavor to it. Now we're gonna try the, the main event, right? Hmm. That meatloaf is outstanding. It's got a really good flavor. I think it's some broccoli in there too. Oh, oh, I love broccoli. It amazes me how I hated vegetables as a kid. And I absolutely love them all now. Everything but lima beans. That meatloaf 
you can taste every spice in that meatloaf along with the barbecue sauce it's not tough it's held together well didn't fall apart not one iota mm. this my friends is a great meal and you could easily make this you could do two of these you know um, but there's enough there for you and your family for you and a couple of friends you know at leftovers yeah you know, airtight container in the fridge after they've cooled all the way down um, yeah don't ever put anything in your fridge with a lid that's not cooled completely down to room temperature it'll cause it to sweat you'll get moisture in it and that harbors bacteria and that could be bad now this did go the full 20 minutes but here's why I I pulled them out at 14 minutes 13 minutes and put more barbecue sauce on the top of those meatloafs so that way it needed the time to reheat the oven up and so it went the full 20 minutes but just 20 minutes that's not bad maybe 10 minutes worth of prep work for 20 minutes in the oven 15 minutes at most prep work you've got a meal that that looks like it, it just belongs in a in a magazine and tastes like a five-star meal hands down give this a try let me know if you do you won't be disappointed i guarantee it i guarantee it quick easy tastes good filling stick to your ribs and you can have it any night of the week you know and all in one pan i have like no cleanup other than a handful of bowls and a pan and even at that i can take the parchment paper throw it away and i'll have nothing to do but wipe off that pan so um as i said leave me a comment down below if you try this or if you do something similar to this uh tomorrow for dessert i think we are going to do a uh bunt cake uh, a milky way bunt cake I, like i said last week i have had this on my mind for a minute well at least a, a, a candy bar cake at any rate and then it hit me, ooh, Milky Way, as I was snacking on some of the Easter Bunny's candy brought to uh, uh, Abby. I found some in a hidden jar. I was like, ooh, this would make a fantastic cake. So I found a bunt cake recipe, and I think we're going to try it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I don't know because I haven't made it yet, but we're going to make it. So anyhow, that being said, give this a try. If you do, let me know, whether it be down in the comments below, over on Facebook, if there's ever anything you want me to try um, to make, you know, or make and show the rest of the world, or I mean, whatever, just let me know. You know, I'm always taking ideas. You know, um, I love ideas. It's sometimes it gets hard to think of ideas on your own. That's what we have a neighborhood for, right? So anyhow, till tomorrow for dessert. I love you. I love you very much, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Tell somebody else you love them and that you love them very much. It's gonna make their whole day a whole lot better. They may need to hear it. It's gonna make you feel good to tell them that. And if you buy invite them over some for some mini meatloaves and some mustard glazed potatoes with a side of roasted broccoli, that's gonna to lead to a whole evening of conversation, I guarantee it. So until tomorrow for dessert, I'll see you then. Alright? Talk to you later. Love you. Bye-bye.